You're listening to Truth on Tap with host Kevin Kirsted. Ladies and gents, this is Kevin Kirsted, host of Truth on Tap and Caps on Tap. I hope you're enjoying the show. Truth on Tap is focused on bringing you absolute truth about everything from mainstream media to comedy, from psychology to the paranormal. This show keeps it real, not the fake kind of real, the real kind of real. That same spirit also covers our Caps on Tap show about the Washington Capitals. Caps on Tap shows air only after Capitals wins at this time. Please come like our Facebook page and join the conversation at facebook.com slash truth on tap show. Truth on Tap has been picked up and promoted by iHeartRadio, the internet audio mega monster, so shows are available there as well as on Spreaker and a limited selection on iTunes. To get in on a show's chat, you can chat from the Facebook page I mentioned or go to www.spreaker.com slash user slash Truth on Tap and look for the live episode or call in at 910 No Lying. That's 910 665 9464. Thanks again for checking out Truth on Tap and Caps on Tap. You're listening to Truth on Tap with host Kevin Opening up the truth pipeline for these bitches. Truth on tap. Truth. Truth on tap. What in the fuck are you doing tonight? 310 Alpha Mama on 81414. I can't believe this is working. Don't expect this show to last. If you've come to this show expecting it to be some sort of smashing success that'll carry you into the wee hours of daytime at, uh, tomorrow, uh, it, it, don't, don't count on that. Because Verizon DSL has its dick six feet deep into my ass right now, okay? Uh, literally couldn't watch a YouTube video, literally couldn't listen to a radio show. So I got my thinking cap on and said, I know my download speed's around 10 or 12 K bits right now, but what if my upload speed is still decent for DSL? I could at least run the show in 32 K bits. So that's what I'm trying. Uh, uh, you're welcome, Jewish producer. Uh, if you could hear me, guys, would you just tell me in the chat room, are you picking up static? Is anything breaking apart? And then I'll know if this is even going to be worth our time or trouble. Jewish producer and Barco already in the chat room. I, I hope nobody thinks I was trying to steal Debbie Daly's people. I was not. I did not expect this show to work at all. And I swear to God, that's true. Plus, who am I to her? I mean, I'm not, you know... Comparatively speaking, you're talking about a primetime show to, you know, late, late, late night. You hear my vagina lips fluttering? No, sir. They clap, and they clap loudly. It sounds like applause after the applause. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll let you talk to my vagina later. Right now, we're talking about the topic, fun money, profitable hobbies for Apocalypse. It was his idea. I will now brandish the iron with which I will brand him and that's going to be what do you do to make money with your hobby well you can always clap your vagina if you can if you can clap your vagina I guarantee goddamn tea you can make money with that and you know it's fun who could possibly clap their vagina while not having fun name somebody name one person they're watching an old episode of a Robin Williams stand-up comedy act, rest his soul, love the man, and for their applause, they get the labia slapping, ha wa pa pa ha wa pa 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 and make money from it. My God, what what is the world coming to if you can't make money slapping your vagina lips together? It, you know, if I had some, I would do it. I, I would do it. Clearly, I would. Uh, this is some of the gayest goddamn music I've ever played, and you know, I think I'll play some more after this.
How about purple Hold muscle? I'll Keep line that shit up. And, and then I'm just going to turn the music off so we can, <clears throat> you know, we can talk about vagina lips without interruption. You guys in the chat room ought to be able to tell us, since someone listening to this show may ask, what's the best way to make money with your hobby? You can't take it too seriously because that then becomes your occupation. And let me tell you something. I don't know if you've experienced this, but my hobbies in the past that I've tried to turn into money makers have immediately turned into work and immediately lost their flavor. True. This radio show will be an exception. If I start making money with it, it'll actually accelerate the pace at which I produce. Because I love radio. You couldn't tear me away from radio. If I had two listeners for the rest of this show's life, I'd be happy. And if I didn't have two, I'd hire two. I'd say, just tune in. You don't even have to listen. Go take a shit. You can go fucking clap your vagina lips together in the other room. Just just have it playing. Okay? And if you don't mind, click the little like button, the little heart button. Make me feel good that I've reached two people. And I'm in there. I'm not going anywhere. People like me because I'm fair. Uh, most of my friends are conservatives, and I'm not a conservative. You guys know that. I don't believe in half your fucked up policies. Uh, but they like me, and they like me because I'll listen to their argument, and I'll help them with reasoning where I can. And I've had people come into this chat room. Yeah, Debbie thinks I'm smart, too. I I'm not smart. I simply model my behavior and knowledge after the best humans we've ever produced. Apocalypse knows this. If you're Socrates or you're Pythagoras or you're Plato or you're Aristotle or, or even some of the more modern ones like, like Kant, I'm trying to think like you. That's the best I can offer. If people said, how smart are you, Kev? Well, the other night, a friend posted on Facebook and said she was watching Jeopardy. And she said, who knows the answers to these fucking questions? And my girlfriend immediately came on and said, Kevin does. <laughs> it's kind of true. But you know, it's only because I listen, man. I listen to people when they talk, including all the professors I sat in front of. I remember things that I read in books. I try to let it sink in. And sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't. But if you have a decent long-term memory, you're going to become intelligent. Unless you're exposed to no environmental stimuli at all above slapping your vagina lips together for a sound. That's all. Standing on the backs of giants. Barco is apparently consumed with weightlifting, and I don't understand that. I, I, I guess it's a metaphor for something that I have yet to pick up on. I can be very naive when it comes to picking up on metaphors. You have to break it down Barney style for me. Yeah. Be sure to tweet this show. People are lost out there. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm not trying to kill you. <laughs> Apocalypse, I can't help anybody, man. This this show is because you told me to title it this. I don't know how to tell people how to make money with profitable hobbies. All right, we'll do one more song. This is my funk song. I like this one. And you know what? I think I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna play a song since I have a decent audience here that I made and Reason 5.0. If I can find the fucking thing. And you're going, Kev, don't do that to us. Don't do that. I have to. I got to do it. Uh, but I don't see it right now, so you're lucky. I'm going to spare you for now, but I'll find that shit. Uh, hell hath no fury like a DJ scorned. Uh, and I will find that shit. Uh, you could bet I will. In the list of 500 songs, I'll find that bitch. Yeah, attention to detail. That's all it is. I pay attention to any tail. You know what I'm saying? Oh. Ugh. Break that shit down 70s style. I feel greasy afros. I feel fast food that still came in styrofoam boxes. I feel the oncoming of Michael Jackson, but not here yet. He, 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 was, he, was, he was like a tween. Not, not literally. I mean, by then he was, what, 25, 30 when 1980 hit. But, but old enough. Old enough, that fucker. Uh, old enough to be creepy, old enough to, to be able to dance good and sing good, but be mysterious enough to want the elephant man's fucking skull. That, that's interesting shit right there. Now, you want me to grade Michael Jackson for interesting? He gets an A+. 
I'd give him an A plus all the way through. But the rest, uh, we could talk about that. Drug dealing is considered a hobby. Apocalypse is correct. Uh, as is fucking. So if you want to go sell your body, don't sell your body because then you're just a prostitute. Go fuck and then ask for money. But you're better off asking for the money before you fuck. It, just let them know you're going to fuck. And tell them, no, you don't have to give it to me. But if you gave me the money, I, I probably would want to have sex. I'm not guaranteeing anything, but I probably would want to have some sex if you gave me some money. And if it was enough money. Well, there you are making money at your hobby. Assuming that fucking is one of your hobbies. Uh, I, I can tell you, well, I, you know I Google shit all the time. Google is, is, is my friend and my enemy. Uh, yeah, I do shit talk Michael Jackson. Fuck Michael Jackson. You think I'm scared of somebody who's a Michael Jackson fan? Fuck him. I ain't scared of no Michael Jackson fan, that elephant-headed fucktard. He didn't know if he was male or female. He didn't know if he was white or black. He didn't know if he was child or adult. Fuck him. He had some good songs. That's all he had. What else did he give the world? You tell me. We are the world. We are the children. I'm still one myself. Oh, get the fuck out of here, Michael Jackson. Let's see. Make money with your hobbies. Let's see what Apocalypse is looking at here. Now, see, some of these are too serious. I mean, if I go to Woman's Day, I know I'm not going to see clapping vagina lips. I want to I stop the music here. Oh, good. I had, <laughs> for once, I had the stop command loaded in the proper place. Radio Boss is the software I use. You guys that are DJs that are still poking around the market for software, make sure to check out Radio Boss. I think it's the best software out there. I did backflips trying to get Sam Broadcaster to work for me, and it just slapped its vagina lips together and said, look at me, I can clap. And uh, that wasn't good enough for me. It wasn't good enough for me. Uh... You even lift? No, I don't lift anymore. I used to lift like a motherfucker, and I don't lift. I don't lift anymore. Uh, I know how to lift my right hand to somebody's jaw if they're fucking with me. Don't worry about that. Uh, but I don't measure that. I measure that in <clears throat> whether or not they're conscious or not when I'm done. And so far, no one has been. Uh, they lay still after after the punch. So I, I just count that as uh, it's a pass fail test. You know, it's not about how many pounds I can lift. It's does the person move after the strike. And in my case, no. That's been, the answer's been no so far. Uh, but but I try not to use you know my bench press to the jaw a unless it's absolutely necessary. Uh, let's see. If I don't lose my virginity in four months, I'm losing it to you or Stabby. I don't believe you're a virgin, Apocles. I don't buy that. Should I buy? Is, is that a true thing you're saying? Because that's very big of you to come out with that if that's true. But I don't believe you'd say it if it was true. See, this is, this is something I could teach you guys. Uh, not all of you. Some of you are even more masters than I am at, at this. But it is what someone tells you when they're joking. Because oftentimes when someone's joking, you're getting a shitload of truth poured out. Comedy revolves. Successful comedy revolves around you telling painful truths. I mean, you've seen The Mask together, comedy and tragedy. It's because they play so well together. Look at what just happened with Robin Williams. There's not a better symbol of how comedy works with tragedy than to look at his life and then look at his death. I mean, that's really what comedy is all about. Comedy stems from pain. People that don't know pain can never be funny because funny is the polar opposite of pain. It, and you have to know one end before you can reach out to the other end, I think. I don't know. I don't know where I was going with that. Apocalypse was born a Mormon, which I believe means that you, you can't have sex until you're 18, but then you can have up to 40 wives and 400 children. I don't know the actual numbers. I, I don't know the actual numbers. What are you talking about fighting, Barco? Get the fuck out of here. I'm not going to kick you out of the chat room because I'll, I'll just watch you make an ass out of yourself. So you say right there and, and keep making an ass out of yourself. Stabby McHug says no one is born a religion. Comparing a mentally ill individual to anyone means you equal retard. Okay. All right, so let's see what these results were yielding here. Incomplete list of hobbies that could... Well, it better be incomplete. 
Turn your hobby into a money-making career. I don't trust these websites. Six t Forbes. Now, I trust Forbes. Forbes knows how to turn some shit into money. Let's pull up what they got. Now, my computer's going to take about six years to pull this up, so I'll try. All I can do is try. Continue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, will, will somebody tell will everybody tell Barco what their bench press is so he'll shut the fuck up about this seriously uh, well, what's the fucking he's consumed with this I, 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 you know what I bench I, I bench a bitch 50 that, that's what I bench write that shit down in your notebook dox that motherfucker all right, here's six tips for turning your hobby into your job. Okay, well, um, teach others to do what you love. That That's a good idea. That That is a good idea. That actually, you know, teaching piano lessons, off cooking classes, teaching other language, if, if those are your passions. Uh, I, I've done the teaching before, and it was something I knew, but it wasn't something I love. And it's been about electronics and computers. I, I despise electronics and computers. It just happens to be what most of my training was at. So I've never been able to turn that into a profit. Uh, teach the business of the hobby. Okay, well, that's self-explanatory. I'm not going to get into that. Sell, import, invent, craft a product or accessory for enthusiasts in your hobby. That's a good idea, too. You know, whenever an industry pops up, all kinds of supporting industries pop up. If it weren't for the iPhone, how many iPhone cases would sell? I mean, you just think about all the extra things you can add to a product or service. Speak or write about your hobby. Um, you guys in radio, th this is where you have a huge advantage. And I need, I've been meaning to say this for a long time. A lot of people have a serious fear of public speaking. Now, I know you guys probably know this, but I'm saying this to everybody else, too. They did a survey not too long ago, and I think they redid it more recently, that said that the greatest fear in America was public speaking. Number two was death. And like Seinfeld said, that means you'd rather be in the fucking casket than reading the eulogy. So... Look at what you've beaten already if you can do a radio show. You've already knocked out 90% of the potential competition because you're not afraid to speak in front of a crowd. Or for some of you, what would be maybe a crowd if you were lucky. Um, public speaking is, is, is silly to be afraid of, especially in this day and age. Guaranteed there's some audio or video of you already somewhere. Just get used to it. That's the way technology is taking humanity that's just the way it's going i mean we've got tribal people in africa that had never before seen other humans and we now have footage of them from an airplane they're on the fucking internet y'all and they've never seen another human outside their tribe you're gonna be on get used to it be good with it and do something with it you know i i I understand the fear of public speaking. I know what you're thinking. I, I thought the same thing. I, I mean, I was terrified the first time I taught a class. And I remember thinking, what these people are looking at when they look at me is they're seeing a 24-year-old who's just been put in charge of teaching them, and some of them are older than me. And what they're thinking is he can't possibly know what the fuck he's talking about. And... When I realized that what I was fighting had nothing to do with what I really knew, but of people's perceptions, I changed my battle plan. My battle plan became, <clears throat> I need to work on their perceptions. Not on proving what I know. I need to work on their perceptions. So that's what I did. You know, part of what I did in teaching was to talk about other young people that had become experts in their field and give them credit. And it kind of sort of put me up on the level with them. I mean, it was sort of a trick, but it worked. It helped me anyway. Uh, do you want to purchase a personality from a tarot deck? Apocalypse is asking Barco. If the casket buried six feet deep in a casket, that's where I sleep. This casket's buried. I don't know what that means, Tabby. I, I usually know what you mean. You're usually very concise, but I don't know what that means. 
Apocalypse says you can also make a bit of money reselling stuff from DX.com, but you got to buy via bulk option and hope it sells. Uh, what what is DX.com? So you're saying it takes money to make money. I, you know, that's one way to do it. That also separates you from a bunch of people that want to start out with nothing and become millionaires. Do you know how many people I've met that said shit like this? I, I'd say, so what's up? You know, what do you do? Oh, I'm a rapper. Oh, my God. Can you hear me thinking? I'm thinking, I'm looking at your shirt. Uh, it doesn't say Eminem. It doesn't say Flavo Flav. It doesn't say Chuck D. Y'all remember that motherfucker, don't you? Uh, it doesn't say Lil Wayne. It says Piton and Witty. And I have never heard of you. And I'm never going to hear of you. You're not a rapper. Anybody who could talk with music in the background is a rapper. That makes me a rap motherfucking MC King, y'all. What's up, Andrew? Glad you could join us, man. I'm surprised my show's working at all. I got terrible DSL problems right now, bro. Good you could join, though. Uh, so, we are talking, because it was Apocalypse's idea, and I didn't think this show would work, uh, about fun money, profitable hobbies. Uh, what can you think of that someone could do right now to make money from their hobbies that they hadn't thought of before? Let's give them some secret insider tips. One thing I can tell you is that if you have no, if you love money, then just about anything that'll make money will be a suitable hobby to make money at. It'll become a hobby if it makes you money. But if you're like me, and you place no intrinsic value on money, you only see the things that money can buy that are necessities as important, and you don't seek money, it's a lot harder for people like me to define what is it I'm going to do to get more cash flow coming in. Hey, Desert Rose, welcome to the show. Uh, what is it I'm going to do that's not going to bore me? What is it that, I can, that I'm actually good at doing? And that's, that's where we run into a bit of a cross on this graph. And that graph looks something like this. Your ability goes up from zero over time to some number where you peak out at your skills. The amount of income you can make follows that line as it goes up. Because as you gain skill, you gain value. You can now help others. If you can't help others, whether it's helping them learn how to speak in front of people, whether it's helping them learn how to battle cancer, whether it's helping them learn how to get their drugs cheaper, then you're of no value to them. So if your hobby is whittling twigs, and people around you don't want to learn to whittle twigs, and the market is not asking for whittled twigs, you're going to lose in that battle. You can still whittle all day long and enjoy it. Big, happy-ass, goofy smile on your face. But you try to turn that into money without doing a little bit of market research first, and you're going to be floundering around like a fish out of water. What are you going to do that? Why would you do that? Don't do that. Pick something that is in demand that you also know about. And I'm going to warn you, and, and look back at this show if you have to, 10 years from now. Don't say I didn't warn you. If you take something you love, and you turn it into a job that becomes a job, not just a, a money-making hobby, it's going to change. Some of that love for that hobby is going to leak out because now your hobby has become a responsibility. This show, as it is right now for me, is not a hobby that I'm looking to profit from. I think I might. I think if I keep going with it... It'll probably take years to build it up into something meaningful. I don't know. You guys tell me, I mean, for something like this, we, we are going the way of the podcast. We're finding ourselves neck and neck uh, in advertising avenues, along with the Adam Carollas and the Alex Jones. And, you know, I, I look and say, what, the, the, the playing field is becoming level for format and foundation. It is not in any way level for talent. You don't just start doing a radio show and instantly succeed. You've you, you got to build up a base. You have to develop your personality. 
you have to work on your audio equipment and your uh, transmission method, your internet, you know, m mine. I can't believe I'm doing this show right now. My show is one of the least likely you've ever heard on Spreaker. I've got a seven-year-old piece of shit laptop. I've got a headset that my cat chewed up. My studio is a back porch that's falling apart. And tonight, I'm broadcasting to you on something that's slower than a goddamn 56K modem. This show is one of the most unlikely to be broadcasting right now. So the fact that it is, I'm thankful for that. I, I, I can't believe it's working. It's, that is a small miracle to me. And let me tell you this. You know how you love doing radio? I'll, t I'll give you a, a clue. How many of you guys that do shows every two or three days have run into a, a problem where you couldn't do the show uh, a night that you wanted to or a day that you wanted to? What does that do to you? How does that make you feel? I just about freaked the fuck out tonight when I w didn't think I could do a show. You can ask my girlfriend. I was a dick today when she came home. I'm never a dick. I'm I'm never a dick unless I'm talking about Alex Jones. Um, I'm just not. I'm just a nice guy. I was a dick tonight. I, I mean, I was pissed off at Verizon, but what I was really pissed off about had nothing to do with Verizon except for the fact that their product was keeping me from getting on the radio. Yeah. Desert Rose is a stalker, a female stalker. Watch out for her. You got to watch out for her. Um, Desert Rose, you know, I've been hearing about your show more and more and other shows. That's a good thing. That is a very good thing. That's that's a sign that you're getting attention. Selling voiceover work on Fiverr. Heck, even small stuff on that site sells well. I could do voiceover work. I could do imitation voices. You guys like Don Imus? Well, God damn it, man. Everybody likes Don Imus. If you don't like Don Imus, you're obviously drunk. Or you don't recognize talent when you see it can tell you when Howard Stern came up to me and said, it was good to meet you. I said, get the fuck out of my office. What the fuck is wrong with you? I see your funky ass in here. Some nappy-headed holes right there, oh, for sure. Yeah, I, I can do vo I could I could do fake voiceovers. Um, I used to do that in high school. That's how I got interested in radio. I used to call the local station WNVZ here out of Virginia Beach. Z104. And I would imitate stars back then and I won't do it now so don't ask me to I haven't practiced these in a while Arnold Schwarzenegger everybody did him RoboCop everybody they used to always want me to do RoboCop I would do RoboCop <coughs> oh who else I would do Jack Nicholson everybody see I just did the ones everybody did which is kind of like that's not creative that's not my style now I like to do things that people aren't doing now so I'm not doing the fucking it annoys me when I hear somebody uh, impersonate Arnold Schwarzenegger that's just tired, man. It's tired. Put it away. Start something new. Imitate Lil Wayne. You want a challenge? Let me hear you sound like Lil Wayne. Go ahead. Who can do it? I didn't think so. Let's see what you fucktardy and refugees are saying in chat. What sounds good? Uh, are you talking about... You know we're broadcasting right now in 32K... Andrew, <coughs> I could get the information from this radio sh uh, show to you faster if I were to put it on a thumb drive, tie it to my cat's collar, and smack him on the ass. I mean, we're in the land of part of why I do a radio show is because I want to get in audio form onto the internet all the shit I think. You know, it, it's not like I've written that book. I mean, I've written some books, but they're all fiction. I, who would read a book about my life? I'm not writing that book. I, even if I were famous, I wouldn't write that book. That's fucking self-serving, pompous asshole shit. Somebody else can write one, but I'm not. No, I'm not doing that. So I can get all my philosophy and thinking out in radio shows, and then if I die tomorrow, well, then my daughter has a way to learn everything she didn't know about me. Stuff like that. Would you be ashamed if your child heard your show? I. I would feel some shame, but, but there's value in it. True, Desert Show is about kill squad contracts for hire. Now, you want to get into some money. Uh, yeah, become a hitman. Become a hitman. I mean, if, if you can get away with it, that's quick money. I mean, think about it. You're getting paid like $50,000 a second. There's a very profitable uh, job there for you. I mean, the margin is indescribable. It wouldn't even compute in the stock market. 
Jesus. Yeah, I can't. I cannot advise breaking the law to make money uh, on this show. Um, and yet, if you do, uh, okay. If you get away with it, you, you must be smarter than the cops. So okay, okay. My kids are too embarrassed to listen to my shows. Uh, you know, I think that's probably what's going on with mine, too. And I don't blame them at all. But, you know, let me ask you this, Desert Rose, because I have made an effort since I've become a parent. I mean, I actually started this effort before I became a parent. I promised myself when I was younger, I will never embarrass my kids the way my parents embarrassed me. And I realized that it, while that's true, I don't. I'm very careful with my stepdaughter to be a my daughter. To not embarrass them in, in those ways. And to be honest with you, I'm just going to tell you. Um, I grew up with alcoholic parents. And what's more, I leave it up there for people to listen to later. I even let them download it. Yep, I sure do. Even ran a press release in the local paper to tell everybody how to get to the show. But not everything I say is dumb. A good half of it has some value. A quarter of it's entertaining. The rest is dumb. So I look at it. Uh, fun money, profitable hobbies. Desert Rose says you ought to just, uh, you know, become a hitman. Why not? She's got a squad. She'll put you on, get you, get you working. I had been reading to you guys earlier Forbes tips, and they were good tips. But I didn't read the last two. I read you four of them. The last two are create a tour or performance series around what you love. Um, that makes no sense to me, and I'm actually reading the description right now. I'm just going to read you what it says, and, and this is a quote. The other day I met a woman who bills herself as a founding father's fanatic, and she performs at schools in character to teach students about the founding fathers. Another example of this is Tony Mula, who turned his love of pizza and Brooklyn into the highly successful A Slice of Brooklyn Pizza Tours. I also know of a bike enthusiast who runs bike tours in California. Uh, good luck if you can do that. You, you, you probably have better luck being a clown at a retirement home. I, I just don't see that going anywhere. But hey, this is Forbes. They know their shit on money. And last, but certainly not least, is appraise, repair, or fix items related to what you love. Most hobbies have stuff connected to them, and sometimes that stuff needs to be fixed by a skilled, knowledgeable person. You could fix computers. Eh, I do that. It's not that fun. Appraise collectibles, repair bicycles, source missing parts for highly unusual items, and so on. I agree with that. If you're into something freakishly rare, like... Um, Trains manufactured between 1921 and 1938, you know, model trains, and you have parts and shit for them, and you know how to work on them, you, you've got your niche there, or niche if you insist, uh, that can make you some money, that because it's rare, because it's hard to find somebody that does that. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at all, all of these um, additional tips they're putting in here, and I'm not really... We can't all be Olympic skaters, NBA top scorers, or real estate moguls. That's for damn sure. Some of us just end up on Spreaker. Know what I mean? Yeah. But I guess I'll oh, brew your own mead, beer, and wine. <clears throat> well, I know a guy that does that apocalypse, and he's, he's a miserable failure in, in every way. But he does have good beer. Yeah. Well, he lives right across town from me, and uh, I had to just be honest about it. So he's probably pissed off if he's listening to this show. I don't care. I tell the truth on this show. Uh, it, it, it stings. It stings. And, you know, maybe... Uh-oh. Server connection closed. See, now now the server th problems are starting. Can you guys still hear me? Uh, see, I'm inside Radio Boss, and it's going, It's on, it's off, it's on, it's off. I don't know. We'll see what you guys have to say in chat. But the lunatic people that listen. I, I'm not embarrassed. I, I'm not embarrassed at all over the people that listen to my show. I, I praise them. I, I go and listen to their shows. We have to support each other, guys. There's room for everybody in radio. Th this host on host attack shit, you guys know how I feel about that. There's no sense in it. I mean, 
it, here's here's the one example, or there's actually two, but the, the one fundamental reason that I would forgive you right up, right up front for attacking another host, and that is if that host has a lot of followers and they're misleading them about something, and you know they are, and you want to go after them for that reason, good on you. The other reason is if you're just doing it for ratings. You know, if you're doing the pre-fight press conference, if you will, you know how the guys act. They get up each, in each other's faces. Sometimes it turns into a scuffle. Go ahead, man. If you're gonna, but if you're doing it to settle a score, I think you're missing the whole point of what you can do with the medium of radio or podcast, whatever you want to call it. I'm calling it radio. So, I mean, it's just radio is evolving, and it's becoming podcasting, live casting, simulcasting, fucking casting. Uh, whatever casting you want to call it, it's radio. All right, it's still on. I, I'm looking at Radio Boss now, and it's going server disconnected, server connected. So we'll be lucky if this lasts for another hour. Um, but it makes me wonder, you know, I've been we're talking about hobbies here, and we were talking about uh, how you can make money with your hobbies. And it's 3:45 in the fucking morning, in the middle of the week. And there's something I do at 3.45 in the morning in the middle of the week, every week. And that is to uh, shave my cap. And that's what we're going to do right now. Come here. Come back here. Come back here. Yeah. Come on. It won't hurt. Just hold on. There we go. I'm going to shave a... Put a K in the side. There we go. Yeah, my cat now has a K shaved in her side. That's going to be for Kevin. Uh, or it could be for kill. Uh, maybe she'll become a hit cat. Is, is that possible? I, I think it is. Uh, hey, baby. Yeah. Uh, like no, nobody's in my studio uh, laugh snorting I'm right now. Here with or snort watching, depending on if you want. Put your noun yeah, first. Uh, or or well, your bird kind of first. Business, so and, why uh, don't you leave a message and maybe but, later uh, on we'll go pick out a Cadillac. Uh-huh. <laughs> Hello. The number I have. This is what he would sound like leaving your answering machine outgoing message. Hello, Heaven here. God speaking. Look, if you leave your name, number, and prayer after the tone, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Please note that I try to answer all prayers in strict rotation. Ah, righty then. Yes. I beg your pardon. And once in a while, you when you call God, you pick this up. Manner? Am I the object of this brazen overture? I then kindly confine your remarks to a brief message. To commence as soon as you shall hear the tone. Good day. Yeah, and, and I'm sure God's British, right? Yeah, right. God's British. Excuse me? I do it costly. Why, well, yes, you are. Yeah, see, they're all wound up like that. I'm cutting out a bit. Yeah, I figured I might be. My mother does get tired of shaving my back. I'm sorry about that, Stabby. You should wax, because wax can hold the hair, it keeps the hair down quite a while longer than just shaving. Um, I've also heard that if you uh, pour gasoline down your back and light it on fire and get it to at least third degree burns, no hair will grow there again. So, you know, I'm just trying to give you options here, because you don't need a stressed mother running around. That, that, could, that could end in heart disease or something. Uh, just, you know, it doesn't have to be gas. You can use kerosene or... Even rubbing alcohol, and just pour it all down your back, light it on fire, and let it burn for at least a few minutes uh, until you no longer feel the pain, and then the hair won't grow anymore. This is just something I heard. I don't know if you want to try it or not. Uh, I would recommend having a friend do it so you don't make a stupid mistake or something. Uh, you know, just burn that skin right below that fourth layer of the epidermis there, and uh, hairs will will not grow in that uh, landscape <laughs> anymore. She once was going to make a line of bedazzled banana hammocks in 4X.
<laughs> Stabby made me laugh. Most people don't make me laugh. Once in a while, man. Once in a while, somebody will get me. You know? But I'll never laugh like that. That I can assure you of. Um, talking about making money with your hobbies. Let me give you an example of somebody who could not make money with his hobbies. The following are the numbers of pi to 15 swear words after the decimal. 3.1 fuck shit cock cunt vagina douchebag asshole cocksucker motherfucker piss bugger twat spanker whore wanker jackass sperm <laughs> If you happen to be good with math you can take a new a, a new avenue on math and do something like this uh, Let's get Yeah, that's pretty good stuff. That's pretty good stuff. Uh, that's another avenue you could take if you're good with the math. If you're good with the math. Uh, if you're good with your voice, you don't have to do radio. Because you could do something like this. Yeah. If, if you are good at speaking and you can rouse large crowds of people to do things that wouldn't ordinarily seem very reasonable and you might you might hear this I have a basket of diarrhea I have a basket of diarrhea yeah yeah that's the Gestapo here they come now let's say you don't have a good voice but you insist on singing you might realize that your problem is lyrics. You need to find something that's not very common. You might do something like this. Yeah, sing it again, bitch. Yeah, I mean that's that's one option. That's one option. I I would advise not investing time and money into that because I don't think it's going to be profitable for you. I sell paracord. Uh, yeah, I do. I sell paracord bracelets, and uh, I haven't been making that many lately because, to be honest with you, my back has been very very fucked up, and it takes away your ability to concentrate on anything. This has turned me from a person who used to be laser sharp focused to a bumbling fucking idiot because not only do I lose the ability to focus and concentrate but I can't sleep until my spine lets me and the last time before last night I was up for three days again and that's too many days that's just too many days you can't do anything you can't think you know but only when you play the clips I don't know why he would be okay with that we just model clothing for her. Um, well, Desert Rose, if you have not noticed yet, you're the only female in the chat room, and there is a certain level of sexual tension that is building. Uh, anybody who's a fan of writing, especially script writing, things of that nature, if you've written novels, you can see this. You can see this growing. And ultimately, what the guys want is somehow for you to get naked in the chat room. That's what they're looking for. And I, Jeff Foxworthy, I'm not a huge fan of rednecky stuff because it seems so narrow-minded most of the time. But he said guys only want two things. They want to see you naked and a beer. They want a beer and to see something naked. And that's really what it comes down to. We're looking to get our brains out of normal reality. So get it into something high. And then see something naked. We got to see something naked. It's a shame, isn't it, Desert Rose? Because I'm the guy that's out there fighting for equal rights for everybody. I'm the guy out there promoting women in a man-owned world. I'm out there taking my own slaps at the glass ceiling, 
and yet I come in here in this chat room and I see all they want you to do is get naked. That ain't right. You tell them. You tell them. Tell them the true value of... See, I grew up with four sisters. Uh, I could not have grown up sexist if I tried to. It was beaten out of me before I was old enough to defend myself. So, yeah. But it, it does. Sexual tension builds up and there's a... What is it? You, you, you want to know where you see it best? Remember when Regis was with uh, uh, Kathy Lee? You know, you know, you know what you thought. Do I even have to say this? Are they fucking? That's what you were thinking. That's what you were thinking the whole... Are they fucking? It, it's a sad thing, but it's how our minds work. We go straight to the basics. Who knows about Maslow's hierarchy of needs? Get into that fucking hierarchy. Learn that pyramid. On that bottom level is where we are 95% of the time. We're on the bottom level of that hierarchy. We're hanging out at the base of the pyramid. The basic needs. Food, water, shelter, sex. Everything else, what the heck? Uh, uh, Kim, Kim comes... Uh, she, she asked if I was doing a show tonight, and I said no, because my internet's not working. So... Am I fucking? Yeah, that's a good question. Am I fucking? Uh, sometimes you have to wonder. You know, if, for example, if you were to rub Novocaine all over your body and then go lay in a bed with somebody and everything started moving, you'd have to wonder. A am I fucking? A or am I falling down the stairs? I don't know. I know there's motion, but I can't feel what it is. <clears throat> the truth is, I could be taking a shit in the tub but I well you have to have a blindfold on too that would enhance the experience experience right so uh, you know m maybe I just got in a car wreck and I thought I was at home possibly fucking um, if you ever asked this question and the way did stabby just ask that question I can't remember who asked it yeah I believe stabby asked it am I fucking if you ever have to ask that question chances are you're in a place you shouldn't be I just want to make that point because this will help you bypass a lot of the road work that it comes with understanding when you're in a bad place. If you say, am I fucking, my immediate conclusion is, without knowing anything else, you're probably not in a good place right now. You're either too high or too out of it to be in a place where you might get fucked. That's all I have to say about that. Oh, I see. Okay, yeah. Well, I wrote a in one of my books called The Unbitten Onion. It's for sale on Amazon. And I modeled it after The Onion, the newspaper. And it was about a car. The, one of the articles was about a, a, a new windowless car. And it was all about reducing sensory input so that you can enjoy yourself more. And um, I talked about people numbing their bodies. And to have sex and then one lady was commenting going are we having sex we don't know it, it was it was interesting it, but you got to be there you had to be you have to read it so yeah go spend 99 cent to laugh at something i wrote instead of listening for free to laugh at something i said see i'm not a businessman i, I just am not a businessman i don't have it in me i, I worked at radio shack for a while um, and it was when I was in college the second time because it was close to my college campus. It was that simple. And I, I like Radio Shack. I like electronics. And uh, I didn't mind, you know, that, you know, I'm, I'm not getting hired as a manager. I don't care. Uh, put me right out front. And uh, that's what I did because I got to make my own hours. And uh, what was the whole point of that? Oh, my, my manager used to say, Kevin, you will talk yourself right out of a sale. And it's true. And I did. And it's because I told people the truth. I could sell you a phone. We, we got paid good money if I sold you a new contract with a phone. But I wouldn't stop when I had you. I'd keep talking to you about it. And you might hear something you didn't like. And that's just the way it was. So, yeah, I didn't do well with that. I'm not a salesman. <sighs> 
But you know what's good about that, if you're going to bother to listen to this show, is that's yet another testament to the fact that I don't bullshit. Uh, I couldn't sell you something if I tried to. You know, and sometimes it can pay. I mean, just the other show, the last show I did, I was trying to promote uh, a friend of mine who sells Kratom. And I don't know if Apocalypse knows this guy, but it's uh, Todd Baker over at Kratom Warehouse. And I just told him I was going to put in a plug for him, you know, because I like what he does. I like his product. And I did. And he sends me an order that's worth like a hundred bucks for free. I didn't ask for that. I sure as hell didn't expect it. So I, I think honesty and doing favors for people will pay you dividends. But it's just important that you don't expect it. I mean, that's a philosophy thing with me. Just don't expect it. Why are you lost, Desert Rosa? Are you lost because Stabby didn't know if he was fucking or... Yeah. Do you have to use the bamboo roller thing? I'm lost on the bamboo roller thing. I mean, it was right after you mentioned sex. I thought of you because I saw someone work metal charms in them. Um, if you're talking about paracord, I, I don't know what you mean by bamboo roller thing. I, I, I made my own, um, uh, I forget what they call it. I think they call it a jig. But it's like a little wooden thing to tie your stuff up to so that you can have tighter weaves. Because if you don't do that, then you're fucking around. It looks like you're having a seizure when you're trying to make your bracelets. So I, the reason I like paracord, guys, is very simple. It's a very fundamental love for the material. It's because it's flexible. It's because, you know, I've been skydiving, so paracord literally saved my life twice. If it hadn't been in the parachute, it, I would have been dead. It holds a 550-pound test. 550-pound test. So I believe in paracord. I like it. Remember, this started in World War II when the guys landed in Germany and in France. They uh, would cut up their paracord. And they'd leave their parachutes behind, but they'd cut up the paracord and take it with them because it's so useful. I mean, you could tow cars with this stuff, a single strand. And as you know, if you've bothered with any physics at all, if you start wrapping it and making more than one pass with it, you begin to increase the pressure that you can put on it before it breaks. So the two bracelets I'm wearing right now, one's a watch band I made for my watch, my solar-powered watch, so I could truly get lost in the wild and be okay for quite a while. And the other one I'm wearing on my other hand is a paracord bracelet that has woven inside of it fishing hooks, four fishing hooks, four sinkers, 30 feet of fishing line, which I didn't even have to include because you can use the paracord strands for fishing line. But I figure why take apart my strands if I can just use the line and then save the strength of the cord for, for later. Uh, it's awesome stuff, man. Look it up. If, if you don't have a paracord bracelet, get you one. Get you a survival bracelet. Yeah. I, I think what I'll do, since this show somehow is still working, is uh, I'm going to play a couple songs, give you guys time for a PP break. And then we're going to talk seriously. We're going to talk more about making money with your hobby. And I'm going to look up something and see if it can jog my memory or something. Maybe I'll have some actual valuable input uh, for this topic. Let's see what... I know you guys want to hear uh, Genghis featuring Stereo Blackstar Super Negro. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to play that right now. I'm going to wait because I want to talk during that one. Yeah. But I will play my Irish friends. Go take to Truth on Tap with host Captain Pearson.
express the same things but with different words We acknowledge the same curve and those might have hurt It's like the last line you draw to remind the past time A fast mighty feeling of freedom please you be recognized And I can hear your doctors calling from here to say Vice and dependency and I'll kill the seal Cause he on himself is stealthy mass appeal Where's the news? Where's the news? It feels like every word slipping through my mouth has been used Stacking like the old man feet in a bird With my glass I protect and have the things that I've learned A windowless frame in a transparent room Filling up cracks with plastic or suits Shape shift Myself as I walk along the wary moldy watching I found myself staring Building up an empire and my great desire Well the fumes from my thought process takes me higher Higher and higher ain't stopping there My avalanche of color starts over there And I've got the solitary key to go through Ray and delicious The traps can be so vicious
Tap with host Kevin I can't think of a better way to light into Shepard Smith's ass than with a French rapper. Yeah. Uh, super Negro. That's what I, I'm Super Negro right now. Uh, here you go, Shepard Smith. Now, you probably will never hear this. And, and that's a problem because you need to hear this. And I'm going to share with you a Facebook quote that I made earlier about... I'm not even going to read, I'm not even going to read it directly from the thing. I'm just going to speak from my mind. Uh, whether or not you directly called Robin Williams a coward or not, doesn't matter. It was implied. And you're of the old school mindset that anybody who kills themselves is a coward. Because there's a myth that somebody who kills themselves has an easier time than someone who decides to wake up the next day and keep fighting the ugly battle of life. And my idea for you was, I want you to take a high-powered pistol and go sit in a dark room and click the safety off and put it up to your temple and then ask yourself, would it take more courage for me to pull this trigger right now or to put the safety back on, put the gun away, and go to bed. So I'm just about tired of small, narrow-minded, right-wing extremist fucktards like you calling people like Robin Williams a coward when the disease of depression is just as valid and deadly as any other disease in the world, from Ebola to brain cancer. I'm sick and tired of people not learning that psychology is not philosophy. It is now medicine. These conditions are real. Nobody's scared that pulls a trigger that's going to end their life. That's got to be one of the scariest things you can do. This disease is real. Diseases like it are real. Depression is real. Psychopaths are really out there. Paranoid schizophrenics really fight battles every day with voices they hear in their heads. This shit is real. This is not just something that happens in 12 monkeys. It's a very serious problem, and people don't take it seriously. And people like him are representative of that group. Oh, you must be a coward. Uh, it's not. It, it's apples and oranges, you know. I mean, it's clear that someone that's going to blow their head off is not a coward. That's got to be the scariest fucking thing you could do. But it shouldn't even matter. Uh, why are we trying to measure their bravery? They are hurting. I mean, they've done a bunch of thinking, and they've come up with the answer that nothing can get them out of the pain they're in except an end of everything. Death is final. There may be life after death, I don't know. But I know you're not here in this capacity again. So, you know, hearing ass tards like him say shit like he said about well, one of my heroes, fuck him, you know. Is, uh, We're not going to do advanced base camp, I'm sorry, you know. It's a great song, but I'm not in the mood. What we are going to talk about is what the people in chat want to talk about, and I'll take them in order. Uh, Apocalypse wanted me to talk a little bit about this debate. I don't know much about this debate. There's a debate coming up on Saturday, I believe. What is today? We're in Wednesday now? Thursday. Jesus Christ. Yeah, so there's a debate coming up on the 16th. Uh, with, it's going to be between Debbie Daly's pack, if you will, and Goofy Bone's pack. And I'm supposed to be the moderator of this debate. And as the moderator, what I'm telling myself I'll do and Debbie sent me some instructions, but I don't take instruction too well because I just do the right thing. So I understand what she wants, and I'm going to try to give her what she wants, and that is to be a fair judge of who's answering questions correctly, who's reverting to personal attacks, uh, who's you know going off topic. i, I got to try to keep all that in line. And, well, it's supposed to be, a, um, Desert Rose, it's supposed to either be about... Um, they were talking about two possible main topics. One was racism, and the other one was like sexual choice, you know, as far as like gay marriage and all that. 
gay people. So I don't know if they're even going to pick one of those two. But that's all I've been told about it. And I was supposed to be moderating with somebody else, but that other person I don't think is in. So I think I'm going to be the sole moderator during this debate. Uh, but one thing you guys can be assured of is that all will be treated fairly. I will be smacking down any personal attacks because that's not what a debate is about. And it's going to be, as you would expect a uh, debate to be moderated. Uh, I'm going to draw the lines and I'm going to make sure they don't get crossed. So if they take this seriously, and I'll know if they're taking it seriously right away, uh, I'm not going to be fucking Judge Judy in a circus. That That's not going to happen. Uh, I will match the tempo of the vibe of the feel of the show. And if if they are taking it seriously and they want to do this seriously, then I'll be serious. But I'll, But I'll be fair to both sides. That you can be assured of. The other thing, uh, Stabby was talking about pareidolia and things like that. Uh, it's funny because Debbie Daly did do a show the other night, and she did kind of jump on him. Now, as you guys know, I'm behind everybody that's got a show. I, I want you to succeed. If people are listening to you, you're obviously providing them something they want. But when it came to the way Stabby was applying logic to her reasoning, he was pretty solid with his logic. And what she was doing is what we call in logic, in traditional logic, as appeal to authority. And that was quoting someone who had spent many years supposedly studying a certain type of phenomena. And that doesn't make an expert if the phenomena is not a science. If the phenomena, I mean, that's like telling me you're an expert uh, at fortune telling. And I, and I go, okay, well, let me see the evidence. I need to see at least 10 or 12 isolated cases of you telling somebody something specific that would happen to them in the future and then them having it happen to them in the future and it not being vague at all. I mean, very specific and not necessarily easily predictable. Uh, but you can't do that when you get into the field of the paranormal. This is what part of what I like to do in the field of paranormal. We're trying to rein it in. We're trying to figure out what science is and what, what it isn't. And if you'll notice, you know, you just go back 100 or 200 years, things that were paranormal then are normal now. We understand them. And this will continue. This will continue as, as we gain understanding and the, and the technology gets better. Um, I don't know what I see when I see ghosts. I've only seen something that you might refer to as a ghost on three occasions, and I've put over 2,000 hours of direct research into it. Uh, that means ghost hunting time. And I've only seen things on three occasions, and they were relatively brief and I still don't know what a ghost is it, you know what I do know is that it's not a hallucination I do know that people will lie about seeing things like this to get attention I do know that hallucinations are real I just know that in my case they weren't because on all three occasions I had a witness to corroborate my story and even though the story was an unlikely one you know it wouldn't be oh he said he saw a ghost so let me think okay was it somebody sort of white and fuzzy no they were very specific so uh, pareidolia, things like that, is when you basically are finding patterns and randomness. This is something the human mind has evolved to do. It has helped us in our survival. And you have to be careful with it. You know, if you're, you looking in the clouds and seeing pictures is one thing, but when you transfer that to seeing a patch of fog and saying, that's fucking Rochambeau right there, I, I got to see a lot more evidence to believe you there. Uh, this happens all the time in ghost hunting and a lot of that is because the fear factor is up and a lot of that is because it's dark outside and your your senses are already heightened and you're picking up everything you know you go out there in the middle of the day uh, with people and you won't see the same things even though there's no reason the same things wouldn't be there I don't think ghosts prefer operating at night so we have to turn it into more of a science those of us that can think scientifically and are still interested in the paranormal it's hard to find us most people that are diehard scientists will not entertain questions about the paranormal. I find that totally wasteful. Uh, at least as a hobby, they ought to, you know? So you guys are still talking about, uh, you guys are still talking about the debate. Um, you, you thought Mr. Solutions, I don't know anything about him. Everybody's talking about him, but I haven't listened to what he does or anything, so... You know, it sounds to me like, this is the only thing I worry about with this debate, 
if this was Debbie Daly's idea, and if this is Debbie Daly's people that are participating, aren't they going to have a jump on the content? And I told her in an email today, because one of her ideas was that we uh, limit personal attacks. We have to, you know, three strikes are out was her idea. And I think that's a fine idea. But the question is, have we told Goofy this yet? Because if we surprise him with rules on the day of the debate, has he had adequate time to prepare within the confines of the rules? Then no is the answer. So that's not fair to him. So I said, if you want to do this this way, this three strikes you're out thing, we got to tell him right now if you want it to be fair. And, you know, she'll see. If she had some interest in getting somebody like me, who seems to be Mr. Fair and Mr. Logical, to favor her side on a debate, she's going to be unpleasantly surprised. But I think Debbie's smarter than that. She knows I'm fair, and she just wants somebody in the middle there that's going to try to keep everybody in the boat, you know? I don't know if I can do this. I've never moderated a debate. I don't know. Apocalypse says, The two topics Team Goofy is well equipped to discuss, again, moans the older women not having near the same sex drive as older men, which is apparent that he doesn't get much tail. His age group is prime full of cougars and such. Uh, how old is Goofy? I've only listened to three of his shows. I called into one of his shows. And uh, he actually said something on his last show that he heard I had been talking about him behind his back or something. I'm like, uh, what? You know, what, what have I said negative about him? The only thing I said is I probably wouldn't listen to his show normally. Uh, it's just not something I would like to listen to normally. I, I need something that moves a little faster and that doesn't have so much. There's a lot of anger I, I pick up from his show. And uh, I don't know. I, I just like it to move a little faster. You guys tell me. Here, here's what I want to know. Just about everybody in this chat room right now has a Spreaker show. Some of you have Spreaker and iHeart. What is it about your show that you think is the best thing about your show? I'd like to hear what you think about that. Because to me, if I can find out from other radio hosts what it is that they like, I would value that over just what a listener would like. Because I know you've done your research. I know you've been listening. You know, I've listened to radio shows all my life, and i picked up a lot of what works and what doesn't in them. But I, I am not organized. I am not organized. I could not make this a real program. I would have to hire people to do that. Uh, it just wouldn't work. So the, the thing that I think is best about my show is this growing reputation, which is a, a deserved one, that it's going to focus on truth. It's not always pretty truth. But I don't seek to be nasty and, and remove the sugar coating just to make it sour. Uh, and I'll occasionally uh, be in a pretty self-deprecating mood in order to add to that pot of truth. Because I think that pot needs to grow. And we have a lot of fucking news networks out there and individual talk show hosts on the, on the larger scale lying. They're lying. I don't know if they know they're always lying, but they're just not checking over their shit first. And if they have large audiences, then those large audiences are trusting in them to bring the truth forth. And they're adopting their word as the truth. And I think that should bother people. And it doesn't seem to. Lying has almost become a fashion in America. I don't like it. I'm not giving up the fight on that. I'm going to keep going for truth. Well, that's true. I, I don't think any one of them should be able to make up all the rules. This is a... Uh, but I don't want to make the rules either. I, the only reason I'm even doing this is because I think I could help them to stop trying to kill each other. But I could be wrong about that, too. That may be a very naive thought on my part. I predict the debate will be mostly between them, too. Yeah, you know, your alpha dogs are going to rise to the top in any any type of argument like that. So, uh, but from what I hear, Debbie's got some smart people on her, on her team, if you will. So if it comes down to just a factual debate instead of a philosophical debate, they may instantly gain an edge. I don't know who all Goofy Bone is coming to the plate with. So th that's going to be interesting to see. See, this is another thing with the two possible debate topics they've chosen, which is sexuality or racism. Uh, there's a lot of room in there for opinion, wouldn't you say? 
because so much of what you can learn in those two topics is subjective. So that's not going that's going to favor the better talker, not the more intelligent person. They're not letting me speak, yeah. Uh, th there should be a timer, I think. I, I think there should be a timer. That should be firm. You know, just like just like your traditional uh, political candidate debates. I just just put a timer on. If one goes over, they have to lose time off their next segment. Whatever. Now I'm, I'm reading what you guys are saying in chat because I'm trying to see what I'm getting into here, and you guys are kind of illuminating that path for me a little bit. Uh, none of this will change the way I behave in the debate. It just as I said, I'm not going to take it seriously if they're not taking it seriously. There are studies out there on this. Oh, yeah, there, there are. Yeah, there are studies. I mean, but is that going to be what they're talking about? I mean, if I were to tell you that I wanted to quote a racism study from 1973 done by Harvard University that implied that uh, black Americans are of a lower IQ regardless of their education than white Americans, and I used that study to promote my racist belief that, hey, white people are smarter than black people, then all of a sudden I've put some, some ammunition into my argument. But the question is, who's going to have time to check that study out while we're on the air? And who's going to have time to see if there was a competing study that came out since then that would disprove any of that? Uh, this all can't happen, I don't think, in real time the way we would want it to. So... I guess it's going to be hard for people to argue against what they don't know is coming at them. This is like a defendant in a court case who does not know what the prosecution is going to be asking. And as you know, defendants get coached by the defense attorney uh, who was also looking for the win. And they prepare and they prepare and they prepare and they try to teach this person to be an actor in you know, 24 hours of bench time. And it doesn't work. But... Um, uh, the fact that this is going to be unofficial may lead people to be more honest, you know, and say more than they normally would. So I think this show, and I hope she leaves it up no matter what the results are, is going to be incredibly revealing if you wanted to learn about Debbie Daly's team or Goofy Bone's team. It's going to be very revealing because I think they're going to talk about things that they would not have talked about on their own. It, it's going to be about who knows more about what and how they can prove it. It's going to be very revealing in that sense, I think. I feel that I can speak on any topic without having any real knowledge on the subject. Um, I know people like that, Stabby, but if I'm given the permission to probe a little deeper with questions and use the Socratic method, which is my favorite, I can, I can expose someone like that in under a minute. Uh, easily. So... Unless she doesn't want me to do that, that way. And, and I'll tell them that up front if I'm given that kind of permission. It's not my show, you know, and I, I, I respect the boundaries of whose show I'm on. You know, when I got on with Goofy Bone, I wanted to argue with him about how he was bitching about people on welfare. Because not everybody on welfare is out to steal your paycheck. Some of them are honest, hardworking Americans that have fallen flat on their face. That's why we have the program. There are fraud lines you can call if you find somebody on welfare that shouldn't be on welfare. But that's not what he was saying. He, he was saying, these motherfucking people I know need to go out and work. They need to go out and work. If they can twerk, they can work. And I was just thinking, if you've never been an African-American woman with a petty theft record trying to get a job, you may not be familiar with the hurdles involved between you and your next paycheck. And it's important to understand that you cannot use your standard for your life to, to blanket over everyone else. You know, it all comes from understanding. And it's like Helen Keller said, the best thing that can come out of an education is tolerance. And I've heard people say, well, tolerance is just, uh, is really just apathy. It's really stopping to care about what's going wrong. And it's not. It's not. That's not what tolerance is, and it's not what it's defined as. Yeah. Uh, for example, in our, in our state, Desert Rose, if you're going to apply for welfare, you have to be registered with the job bank of Virginia. 
You have to go to every interview they send you on. You have to have a minimum of three confirmed job contacts per week as you look for work. And you have a caseworker on your ass at least once a week finding out exactly what you're doing and exactly what you're not doing. And if they get even the vibe that you're getting some work under the table or you didn't show up for a job interview, you're cut off. You're gone. So this myth, this illusion that there are people out here buying Alaskan king crab and driving a Lexus on a welfare check is false. They get... If they've got a family of four kids, they end up getting like $430 a month, plus maybe food stamps. Uh, they don't want to be there. Nobody I've ever met on welfare, and I used to work for a place called Renner's Choice, and we would deliver. I mean, we basically preyed on black people. That's what the business did because it was a credit issue. Uh, it's a rent-to-own store. So I was always working with these people. I'd have to drive into the ghetto at 10 p.m. on a Saturday night and take someone's TV, you know, and I got to see how they lived. These people were not happy people. They were miserable. They were ashamed of themselves. The one exception to that was the people that were using the welfare money strictly for drugs. Uh, they, they just wanted their fix. They didn't give a shit about anything and they felt no shame. But most of them did not like being on welfare. They hated it. I could just tell that they despised themselves over it. Uh, so it's just, you got to see it. You got to see them in the life. There should be required documentaries. Somebody needs to go put together a good documentary covering the average unemployed person seeking unemployment compensation, the average welfare person seeking welfare and or food stamps, and look at how they're living. Look at how they're living. And then that helps you, just as in any good book, to get to care about the characters. Once you care about them, and they're not just some sort of mythical creature that's sucking all the money out of America you begin to see why the programs are in place. And if we can't be a country that takes care of our poor when they fall flat on their face, and if we can't be a country that takes care of our elderly and our disabled and our children that have been abandoned, I'm not proud to be a part of this country. So because we can do that and because we do do that, I am proud of this country. But when I see somebody attacking the very systems that they're sitting there claiming, if we didn't spend so much in foreign aid, we could take care of some here at home. And then when you see us taking care of some here at home, those people ought to be out working. Well, who the fuck is it you want to take care of then? You know, you just don't want somebody getting by without hardship. That is the crime in your book. That's what I see more than anything. Yep. I've, he I've heard panhandling can pay well. Yeah, you have to participate in a job search or volunteer work. Um, I had a conservative friend of mine say what we ought to do is when someone goes on welfare, put them in a local job bank. And that means that they're in a labor pool. So they would likely be called up every day to go do something. Uh, and it may not be something they like. That's fine. If they're able-bodied, I'm all for that. I'm, I'm not trying to, you know, just defend people on welfare. I'm just saying that Everybody thinks that they're going, hey, I don't want to work anymore. I think I'll go on welfare. It doesn't work like that. It just doesn't work like that. I, I just want people... I, I, ultimately, I think when people gain an understanding of these types of programs, they become more tolerant of them because they realize that they're reasonable. They're reasonable in a free country that's the richest country in the world. You know, I want a safety net there if I fall flat on my face, and I want a safety net there for you, too. I don't like the idea that we have to panhandle or go to churches or wherever for, you know, for aid. Yeah, I haven't even begun to bitch about the VA yet. I'm not, I'm not doing that on this show. And I'm a disabled veteran. Uh, I'm not even getting into it. But I told you guys when I did a show last month, I said, here's what's going to happen. Everybody's going to be in an uproar about this. And within a month, it'll be forgotten. Have you thought about the VA today? I bet you haven't. Not till I just mentioned it. It's gone already. It's already out of the news. Yep. And that's what will happen. Every 10 years or so, everybody will get their feathers all ruffled for a couple weeks. And nothing will change. Nothing will change. Well, guys, uh, I am getting ready to get the hell up out of here. Because I have reached the end of my capacity as a host. And I'm surprised the show even worked, to be honest with you. 
it wasn't supposed to. I'm still looking at all the server connection, closed output, one restarting on my radio boss and surprised it worked at all. Desert Scan does EBT trades 52 cents on the dollar. Ah, hey, that's a, that's a business you can get into to make money off your hobbies. Yeah, selling them food stamps and all that. Oh. Anybody got any closing any closing thoughts on this? Apocalypse says gut the VA system. That would probably be a good start. The cancer has grown deep and wide in the VA system. Thanks, Desert. Thanks for coming to the show. Uh, I'm surprised I even had a show. Give them vouchers for real hospitals. I was thinking that, Apocalypse. Fold the whole goddamn thing into Medicaid. Make it Medicaid part VA. Probably save a lot of money. But I can't talk. I have a VA appointment on the 26th where they get to tell me how bad my back has become destroyed over the past five years and what they can do about it. I'm actually considering letting these people cut on me because I have to. That's scary. That's terrifying. All right, Stabby. Uh, yeah, you guys, I, I don't know if I'll do a show before this so-called debate, if this debate happens. Uh, well, the debate's going to happen. I just don't know if I'm going to be a part of it uh, pending the technical issues that I'm having. So hopefully uh, I'll do a show before that. But if not, I will see you at the the great debate between Debbie Daly's team and Team Goofy Bone. I don't need luck, man. I got skill. Yes, we'll be fine. So, and for the rest of you, for anybody that may have tuned in... Truth on Tap with host Kevin Kirsten. Ladies and gents, this is Kevin Kirsten, host of Truth on Tap and Caps on Tap. I hope you're enjoying the show. Truth on Tap is focused on bringing you absolute truth about everything from mainstream media to comedy, from psychology to the paranormal. This show keeps it real, not the fake kind of real, the real kind of real. That same spirit also covers our Caps on Tap show about the Washington Capitals. Caps on Tap shows air only after Capitals wins at this time. Please come like our Facebook page and join the conversation at facebook.com slash truth on tap show. Truth on Tap has been picked up and promoted by iHeartRadio, the internet audio mega monster, so shows are available there as well as on Spreaker and a limited selection on iTunes. To get in on a show's chat, you can chat from the Facebook page I mentioned or go to www.spreaker.com com slash user slash truth on tap and look for the live episode or call in at 910 no lying that's 910-665-9464 thanks again for checking out truth on tap and